All right, now let's talk about live streaming. Really one of the most fun parts of vMix, but we got to understand bandwidth. And there's bandwidth for live streaming to YouTube and Facebook, and there's also technically bandwidth on our local area network, which is used for NDI, for local video production, local area network. So there's a couple different networks and there's a big difference between megabytes and megabits. Now, megabytes are files on your hard drive. These files exist on your hard drive. They're not streaming necessarily. They are actual files on a hard drive. Megabits is information that's being streamed, and that's how we measure bandwidth in megabits. Now, most CDNs, when you hear the word CDN, it stands for Content Delivery Network, and that's a Facebook, that's a YouTube, right? Um, they recommend having at least 30% additional bandwidth to sustain solid transfer throughout your event. Others will tell you 50%. I, I think 50% is more safe. So what does that mean? Well, when you calculate your upload speed, which you can easily do, by the way, going to, if we go to um, speed test into Google, and we run a speed test, we'll see our download speed and our upload speed. And it's that simple. Uh, where the download speed doesn't help us too much for live streaming. We're really looking at the upload speed here. And that upload speed looks like it's roughly 23. So we have 23 megabits per second of upload speed. And I can only use half of that. So maybe like 10, 12 megabits per second would be the most that I would use. Now let's look at a local area network really quickly. This is a network that your computer is connected to to get internet access from your internet service provider. So right here you have your router and your router is given to you by your internet service provider. Maybe that's AT&T or Verizon or Comcast, but they give you a router which connects to their network which gives you internet access. You might have a firewall and you might have a network switch, or maybe you're just using the network switch connect that comes built into your router. And you might have some Wi-Fi access points that are represented by these circles here. But no matter what, your local area network is, out, is different than the wide area network, which is what we use RTMP, real-time media protocol, to stream to YouTube and Facebook out of your local area network to a content delivery network, which delivers our live streams to our audiences. Now, it's our choice to choose the resolution, frame rate, and bit rate of our live streams. And so essentially, we're trying to figure out how much processing power does my computer have? Can I handle 4K video? Can I, do I have 4K cameras? Can I ingest 4K cameras? Do I have 4K capture cards? Or do I just have a 1080p streaming setup, which is much more common? Uh, and even if you have a 1080p streaming setup, is it set up for 60 frames a second? Or is it really only set up for 30 frames a second? And depending on your resolution and frame rate, we can use some best practices, right? Some, some setups that uh, allow us to determine the bandwidth, right? The bit rate that we're going to use. I mean, the bit rate truly is the quality of the live stream. So even if you have a 1080p production at 30 frames a second, you still have high, medium, and low qualities that are really change based on the resolution that you have. So my um, com internet connection here is about 25 megabits per second of upload speed. I can't do a, a 4K 30 high quality. I probably should not even try a 4K 30 medium quality live stream, but I could definitely do a low quality 4K stream at 10 megabits per second, and I could do any of these others, I could do a high quality 1080p 60 frame per second setup. So those are the things that you think about when you're choosing your bit rate and doing live streaming. Now, something to know uh, that YouTube and Facebook, they all have something now called adaptive bit rate streaming, meaning they will take the best quality stream that you send them and then they'll re-encode it for people who have low internet access. They have Wi-Fi. They don't have good download speeds. So they'll actually transcode it for you in the cloud. It adds a little bit of latency, but it allows you to, 
basically the, the basics of it is send the best possible stream to YouTube and Facebook. Let them handle how they deliver it to all the different people that are available. I'm not going to go through all of the different networking stuff that we have here at our office. Just to give you an idea, we pay 250 bucks a month. We get 150 megabits download and 20 upload, and it's very important for us, obviously. Now, if we go to back to vMix here and we click the stream cog, that opens up our streaming section of vMix. And this is where we can actually add three different RTMP streams. It's a really nice feature about vMix. It allows you to have up to three streaming areas. You can also have profiles. So if you stream to three unique locations for uh, one show and then three different ones for another show, you can add these profiles and then pull them up. You know, let's just call an example here. Pull them up in a drop down list. Now, you have the option to log directly into content delivery networks like Facebook, which is really nice. And you can go in there and log in to Facebook and get all of your information directly in there. That's using the Facebook API. That's very handy and it's very nice. We generally will schedule our streams on Facebook and YouTube because then YouTube and Facebook will notify our audiences. And to do that, we'll use the custom RTMP information that they give us for that unique event that has been created on these content delivery network platforms. So you can use, you know, you can create three different unique custom RTMPs and maybe one that just goes to your Twitch channel and you just log in and you never update it or change it. Um, so you know, it's easier to use the API through the login of these destinations. It's a little bit more work to add the custom RTMP information in, but you get the benefit of streaming to a unique event, and that is always nice. Now, you have all these different qualities to choose from. Uh, so these are presets that vMix has to allow you to say, hey, you know, I want to do a... a six megabit live stream. I'm just going to choose this preset that vMix has already kind of got enabled for me. Uh, I'm going to go to Facebook with 2.5 megabits. But you can hit the cog button and go in and, and adjust all of the fine-tuned settings for your, bit, your video bit rate, your encode size, and all of that. I don't normally do that myself. I just choose one of the quality drop-downs that works for me, and I hit start. Now, you can start one, okay, or you can start all. If you're starting um, a second one, you can, you know, put something in and start the second one after you start the first one by hitting start two. Uh, you can choose to have the second stream be the same quality as the first one or different quality. So in this way, you can actually, you know, stream different qualities to different spaces. And that's kind of nice. If you're thinking to yourself, well, I want to live stream, you know, one stream to uh, Instagram in a square and one to Facebook in a portrait mode, you're going to need to use multiple versions of NDI, uh, of, of VMAX with NDI to connect your outputs together and then create new productions for those spaces. Uh, VMAX generally is used to stream the same thing to three destinations. Uh, but you can use NDI and we'll learn more about NDI in an upcoming video where you can get more creative about creating multiple productions, you know, one in English, one in Spanish, things of that nature. Um, and we'll learn about that in an upcoming video. So that's live streaming with vMix. And uh, we'll move on to our next video in this tutorial series next.